spotlighting the very best at Geneva College Golden Tornado Athletics. This is Tornado Tuesday. And now, here are your hosts, Van Zanek and Andrew Fee. Welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays. I'm Andrew Fee, alongside Van Zanek, coming off an episode with our first ever musical performance. Uh, pretty exciting. And then this morning, waking up with snow, so it's been a heck of a week. Yeah, I, 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 I have to tell you, I didn't actually watch the episode with the music. <laughs> so I know I was a part of it, but I didn't actually see the music performance. But now that you mention it, I have to actually go back and physically watch it. So, yeah, it snowed last night. Uh, the sun's out now. It's supposed to be 70 degrees. So welcome to Western Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, interesting as we're winding down with some of our practices. It's like... Soccer is still practicing, men's soccer is still practicing, and we're lucky to have them on the show today. But, you know, in terms of golf practice, I'm like, we'll just wake up and decide what we're going to do that day. Because, you know, it's, it's 30 degrees some days, and then it's 70 the next. And then balancing that with the COVID symptoms of just the general fall flus and colds has been a challenge. Yeah, and I think the NCAA was really wise in the way they, they set up a schedule for the year because they put it uh, 114 days as opposed to the 19 weeks. And so, you know, in the past, if you used one day, you used up an entire week. Now, you can kind of pick and choose. And so I think it makes it easier for a coach, even this time of year, if you if you get a nice sunny day, take, take, take the girls over the golf course and, and play. So I think the same can be true for a lot. But, yeah, we're going to talk with Coach Dunda today. And, you know, his passion uh, is, is unbelievable for soccer. And um, he feels really strongly about getting as much opportunity opportunity this fall as he can, not only on the field, but off the field as well, really getting his guys connected. So um, hopefully we get an opportunity to talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah, and he's so passionate about his program, the way he recruits, and the way, you know, the culture of his program when the student athletes get here. I just, you know, this has obviously been a challenging fall for everyone, um, but his passion, his team's passion hasn't wavered in that. And he's been here almost maybe 10 years now um, and has had great success. Yeah, and he's built a template that has worked. And, you know, we talk about consistency in athletics a lot. And so, you know, despite the, the losses to graduation, kind of kids coming in and out, he still maintains that that, that consistency and is always competing at the top of the conference. And, you know, as a, as a program, that's really all we can ask for. Well, we'll be right back with our interview with Coach Dunda. Welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays. Uh, this week we're have the pleasure of meeting up with Head Coach Gary Dunda of the men's soccer program. Coach, thanks, first of all, for taking some time. I've been what's kind of a, an unusual semester, to say the least. It's been different, but it's been positive at the same time. Yeah, you have to feel good about the opportunities to get out. I know your program has been out there practicing for several weeks. You're going to go a couple more weeks, even up into through, through, uh, Thanksgiving. So talk a little bit about what that process has been like, having a little bit extra more time. And, again, maybe the disappointment of not having competition in the fall. We've all had to sure. deal with these types of things. But what's that been like for you guys? It is definitely different. And I think it was, it's been three things that have really changed. Is when they got back to campus in August, not being able to connect with them every day was certainly peculiar. Uh, and I really feel for our freshmen and first year players in the terms of they, our, our culture is very much of togetherness and being inclusive, and our culture demands that. And everything up until this point has been exactly opposite. Social distancing, uh, staying out of each other's rooms, wearing a mask. It, it's completely counterculture to who we are and what we do. And on the field, by the time we hit the field September 14th, our guys have been off almost a month. So there was definitely significant uh, regression in fitness. Uh, there was definitely some rust in terms of how we played. Um, so have patience. That was the, the big thing. Because usually you get the preseason, and it's the push, it's the drive to be ready to win our first few matches. So patience had to had to rule the day and give our guys plenty of time and kind of uh, consistent reinforcement that we're going to be okay and you're going to improve. And that is that 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 has definitely bared the fruit the last few weeks. We've seen a, a certain uptick in our level of play, our execution, and what this team is capable of is is really. Uh, is exciting for myself and Coach Teddy, and uh, we will be ready for uh, March 13th. You make a good point, um, not, even, not even just for student athletes, but just a normal student coming to campus and what they have to deal with in terms of onboarding to college. You have a freshman daughter that's at Grove City that is going through the same type of things, and unfortunately, she's had those types of issues as well. So, 
I know how, how important what the emphasis you put on it, not just the X's and O's and being out on the field and being able to play and, and those types of things, but talk about the, a little bit more about the importance of being just that group together and being able to, to kind of bond as a group and what that looks like. Right, and that's the hurdle. I mean, that is the hurdle because I think our program is based on the idea of brotherhood. And to have brotherhood, you have to have community. And with those things being taken away this semester and trying to integrate these newer players and young men into our family takes time. Because we go through the recruiting process, and that's what we're talking about. And again here, and immediately the first day, they moved in, and we had a meeting uh, out on the North Campus, and they said, first of all, we're all sitting too close. We've got, we've got to get away from each other. And the second thing I told them is, listen, stay away from the upperclassmen. Do not go up to the apartment. Stay away. So all they hear is this inclusiveness through the whole recruitment process. The very first two things is saying, stay away. And then the next thing I told them is, please don't come down to Reed's Field and start trying to clean on your own. Like, so it is just completely the opposite of what the recruitment, uh, our recruitment strategy is. But I give them credit. Uh, the, the, but on the other side, I will say that this first, this group of freshmen have become fast friends. They are extremely close. They help each other. They have really bonded. Uh, they are really, really good friends. You can just tell the way that they communicate with each other coming down to practice, how they kind of stick together, how they've almost been like a band of brothers, like we're in this together. And to a man, they are extremely happy with the decision to attend Geneva. They've all improved as players, and academically, they're doing very well. So I'm very proud of our first, uh, of our first year guys. Well, so talk about, you mentioned the first year guys, talk a little bit about your recruiting style and what you look for. We talked to the other coaches a little bit about this as well. Um, you know, you've been at Geneva mm-hmm. for a long time now. You kind of understand the culture of what it looks like. So what are some of the characteristics when you're out recruiting a young man to come to Geneva? What, do you, what specifically are you looking for? It has definitely evolved. As a younger coach, I was always looking for this incredible player with athletic ability, uh, with the ability to have vision and touch and, and, and flair for the game. And as I've kind of matured and grew into my 22nd year of being a head coach, is I look for the intangibles now more than anything. I want a kid who is passionate about the game, and you can just see it, you know, come through his jersey as he plays. I want to see a guy that is unbelievably competitive, regardless of the score. If the team is up 3-1 or down 3-1, nothing changes about how this young man plays. And then I want to see how he interacts with his coach and his parents. I think that is ultimately important. If we can check all those boxes by watching, then I'll take the next step and say, hey, how good of a player is he? Can he is he good with both feet? Is he dynamic on the ball? Is he is he aggressive on the dribble? Can he connect passes? So it's almost flipped how I've gone through my recruiting process as I've kind of grown uh, as a head coach because those intangibles win more games than the tangibles. No doubt, no doubt. So the spring's going to look a lot different. I just like the fall has looked a lot different. You know, we've done a lot of work in trying to bring a, bring a schedule together and put it together and kind of make it as normal as possible, which obviously isn't going to happen. But a 10-game schedule uh, in the springtime starting, you know, it's going to be a little chilly for you. We <laughs> talked about this last week. We got our first snow for the right. weekend. But, uh, you know, starting maybe late February, uh, starting mm-hmm. competition in March, what are you anticipating that? And for, with, with the guys, number one, result-wise, but also um, how different it's going to be competing that time of year. I think the start is going to be very odd. But I think once we establish a rhythm and a routine, I think we'll be fine. Uh, I think the largest, the biggest obstacle, like you said, is going to be the conditions. Like in August, we're ready to play in 90 degree weather, and in February, it's going to be 30. So that's a complete change. And, that was, and uh, Coach Teddy and I, we've done a lot of talking about how we're going to condition our athletes, because it's going to be different. And I think what's going to be great for, for our program is the depth that we have. We have many, many good players, and we are deep across the board, so I think that depth is going to help us early on, because I don't think early on we're going to have guys that are going to be able to play 70, 75, 80 minutes. We're going to have to kind of keep that number closer to 60, 65, so that's where the depth comes in, and just by going through this fall and seeing how the returning players have evolved and how the young players have been extremely talented, I know our depth will be there. That's going to carry us through the month of March. And then once we get into April, I think we'll be able to have a set rotation where we have guys that are able to play bigger minutes, 65, 70, 75 minutes, to help us win matches later on in the, in the year. i got to believe the guys are pretty hungry. Uh, when we last left you, you were walking off the field at W&J in the championship, Correct. right? Yep. Looking in the conference mm-hmm. championship, making a nice run. Mm-hmm. And see that we get to that point. So i got to imagine that you don't have to do a whole lot of motivating with these guys. No. It, it, it gets back to the recruiting strategy. When you look for 
passion, you look for competitiveness, and you look for just the willingness to compete in everything, that, that's the, that motivation is, is not needed. What is needed is focus. And that's going to be the constant theme is can we focus week in and week out to win the match. You know, we have a saying in normal, our normal week is a two-match week. And so we say uh, we can't win the second match of the week until we win the first. So that's always been kind of the driving force when we win two matches a week. Now the driving force is going to be can we complete the task at hand. And that's and we're going to have four or five days, a lot of time to, to prepare. And can that focus stretch through those days, you know, because it's going to be instead of two days of practice and then we're going to be four days. And can we focus for that man, and execute what we want to do? And if we can, I feel really, really good about this group. What do you uh, attribute the, the thing I, I'm most intrigued with with your program is the consistency. You know, the, I mean, you may be you may lose several, mm-hmm. several guys, but you're, you're able to reload, and right. there's never a whole lot of drop off in terms right. of records. You're always kind of competing for the championship. What do you attribute those things to? I, I think it's class equity. I think we always have four good classes because we we it's always tough uh, losing seniors because they're great guys. They grow with you. Uh, we're so close. And they leave, but that's why you have to you have to stay focused on the recruiting process, and you have to have talent coming in as freshmen. I think we always do that. If you look at our our roster and you look at who plays for us, we have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors that all play for us. So even though we might lose a couple of great players, we have some very talented players coming in, and that's where I think the sustained success can be. And we talk about always wanting to be good, and that gives us a chance to be great. And that's what we're trying to do every year. Well, I'll end on this one. Uh, you've been here for over 10 years now. Yeah. I think it's amazing how, how time flies. But, um, you know, what, what is it about you, Diva? I mean, what is it about, you know, you, you, we have a, such a, a, a veteran group of coaches here in the yeah. that have been here for, for literally decades. What do you think is the draw for, for you in particular and coaches at right. Geneva College, and, and why the longevity? I think it's, it's sorry, so I remember stepping on campus uh, back in April of 2010, and um, it was the feel that I got, and it was just different from other places that I've been, other places that I've talked to. It's the people. Like every college you, you go to, there's a soccer field, there's a gymnasium, a cafeteria, a library, dormitories, but it was the feel and the people and, and the personal touch, but just that they showed me, but more importantly, they show our students. And that is completely different than most colleges and how they recruit. I think most colleges, they look at, like, look at who we are and don't you want to be a part of us? And I think Geneva does it the exact opposite, which I love, is we want to get to know you. And we want you to be a part of us because we're going to take care of you. We're going to help foster your, your walk with Christ. We're going to help you in the classroom. And we're going to give you, you're gifted in, uh, in, in, with athletics, regardless of the soccer team, football team, softball team. We're going to help you cultivate all those gifts you've been given. And we're going to give it a great four-year experience on and off the field, in the classroom, on campus, in service. I think that's what cha- that's what makes Geneva so different than every other school that it is around here. That's why it's special, and that's why I am extremely happy to be here. I'm proud to be a part of the South Lake Department, and I am excited about our future. Well, Gary, thanks so much. I mean, we, I really appreciate the passion that you have every day that you bring to the student-athletes, the way that you walk alongside them, um, not just as soccer players, but growing them as men as well. So um, we're very grateful to have you continue as well. So well, it, it, it's time. great to be here, and uh, I think our future across the board, all, all our sports, is extremely great. And I'm, again, I'm happy to be a part of it. Thanks. Well, welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays. I'm joined beside junior member of the men's soccer team, Cole Sauer. How are you doing today? I'm good. Nice to be here. Thanks for being with us. So just to start off, I know your dad started coaching officially with the men's soccer program and coached Dunda this year. You know, I know it's been a different type of fall season, but how's that been? Yeah, um, he was the, uh, my high school coach growing up, and my coach, uh, my played soccer all, all throughout my life. So it's been nice to have him back coaching. I get to see him on the weekends for practice. It's pretty cool. But um, it's definitely something he loves to do, and it's cool to watch him do something that he likes a lot. And he has a relationship with Coach Dunda. Uh, they played college soccer together at Messiah College, and they were actually roommates for two years, I think. So they're a pretty close relationship. So who was a better soccer player, Coach Dunn or your dad? Do you know? I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> we'll have to get back on that one. So you are a civil engineering major at Geneva, correct? Yeah. How, talk about balancing you know, soccer, academics, and athletics. 
Um, it's definitely something you just have to manage your time with. Um, if you know you have an away game, you got to make sure you get your homework done or email your professor early. Um, also, Coach Sun does a great job of um, making sure we're on top of our athletics. So we email us if we have maybe not even a low grade, but a C and stuff. He's like, hey, what can you do to, to get this up? So um, it's definitely a challenge, but it's doable. And I find that my grades are better when I'm in season than when I'm out of season because I'm managing my time a lot better. So being out of season now in the fall, how has that been? A little weird, probably the first fall in a long time where you haven't had soccer. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's definitely different, but um, we still get to practice a good bit, which is nice. But it's definitely a, a lot different from normalcy, which is well, everything's different now. But <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, you know, talk about being, you know, losing conference championship last year. Um, what does that mean moving forward? How does that motivate you for this season, even though it's going to look a little different? Yeah, um, definitely, I would say, put a spark in underneath all of us because uh, we felt so close and you know, we just didn't have a good game. Uh, I know a lot of bounces didn't go away that came and definitely made us work harder at home during the spring and then come back and realize we're not going to have a season in the fall. It was just kind of like a bummer at first, but then we all got together and realized, like, hey, this is more time to work together and more time to get better. So it's definitely been motivating all of us, but um, there's not much that needs to be done to motivate motivate somebody after you lose the conference championship. So we're just hungry to get back and, and get another shot. So Coach Dunda, during his, his interview, and he always talks about the brotherhood of the men's soccer program. So what does that brotherhood mean to you as an athlete on the team? Uh, it's everything. It's part of the reason why I chose to come to Geneva. Um, I have 30 guys that are my best friends and my brothers and then I get to compete day in and day out with, but also go back to the room and hang out. And I know that these guys are going to be my best friends for the, probably the rest of my life. And it, it just means a lot to have 30 best friends on the team. Yeah, and he, you know, he ties that brotherhood into the community aspect of Geneva's campus. So obviously not everyone that you interact with is part of the brotherhood of the men's soccer program, but the community feel of campus. Talk about the support from the fans, the faculty, the staff of the men's soccer program. What does that mean to you? Yeah, um, I know I'm going to class and uh, professors ask, hey, how was your game last night? Hey, uh, good game last night. It just means a lot. Um, I know that some professors bring their kids to watch and, and a lot of professors are really not only like um, concerned about you and how you do well, how much you do well in a class, but they also want you to be a better person and be a, the best person you can be and be the best athlete you can be, which means a lot. And uh, it's quite, uh, the support's just, just great. Um, everybody cares about you. Yeah. So, you know, I think I ask this question a lot, and this, this time is obviously different, but you're not too far removed from the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. And if you were Right now, a high school student athlete coming out of you know high school looking to play college soccer. What would your biggest piece of advice going? You've already walked through that yeah. process. What would your biggest piece of advice be to them? Um, I would just say make a checklist of what you want. Obviously, school comes first, and then um, I, would, I wanted a Christian college with uh, civil engineering, and I want to play soccer. And you need to check all those boxes, and and it's something that I love. But I would say the recruits coming in just make a checklist of what you want. And then maybe check it for each school and just compare what each school has. And I would say definitely go for a visit and see if you can now and see what the team atmosphere is like. Because um, you're not going to get that from just talking to the coach. You have to talk to the players as well to see what their team atmosphere is like. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about civil engineering, so I won't ask anything specifically. But, you know, looking five, ten years down the road for you, what's your dream job? What's your goal in that field? Um, I'm going to do something where I can give back to a community or give back to a special part uh, or place there. So me and my dad have been traveling to Uganda uh, the past summers and going uh, like soccer missions work there. And my, my dream job is to be able to do civil engineering work or projects for um, less fortunate there and, and still give back in that way. Well, that's awesome. We really appreciate you spending some time with us. We look forward to you guys getting back out on the field in the spring. Um, I know you're still practicing in the snowy weather, um, but we're looking forward to watching you guys compete in the spring. So thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Welcome back to Tornado Tuesdays, following a great interview from Coach Stenda and Cole Sauer, a member of the men's soccer team. Um, really looking forward to watching them, or getting to watch them come back on the field next spring. I think they could have some good success this year.
Yeah, we've talked about the consistency um, throughout the entire program, and I think it, it, it is one of those programs that if they're not competing for a championship, it's a disappointment. And when you get your program to that level, it's good and it's bad. You have a target on your back, and um, like I spoke with Coach Spenda about, you know, the last time we saw them, they were coming off the field losing in the conference championship. So they have a lot to be to play for. They have a great motivation, a great core group of guys coming back. And, again, he spoke of the recruits that they brought into the program. So, you know, there's a lot of excitement, anticipation into the spring, and, and that's one of the reasons uh, we really are working so hard to get a schedule for these kids that missed out on their fall season. And we want to have them an opportunity to get back out there as quick as we can. Well, I wanted to look back in this day in history. Uh, Brandon Kreider scored a game-winning goal in double overtime to defeat Grove City 2-1 to one in the PAC semifinals. We actually have a clip of that. Days, it's good to beat Grove City whenever we beat Grove City. So however we had to do it, and however the goal happened, whatever it was, um, it was it was nice. And I do remember beating the Grovers in, in the semifinals um, that year. So um, always exciting. Uh, we've had some really really great uh, events out here on Reed Field in, in the postseason for the men's soccer team, and and that was one of the highlight moments for sure. And we've had a lot of postseason games for the men's soccer program, which has been really exciting. And you know, one thing I always am surprised about: I didn't come from a soccer background. I didn't come from schools that, you know, love soccer as much as can be, but the crowd size for men's soccer games is incredible. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, it's, it's, it's a perfect fit. And again, I think success breeds that, right? I mean, no matter what program, no matter what sport you're playing, if the Geneva team is being successful, people are going to come watch. And uh, I think that's a big piece of the puzzle. And, and Coach Dunda has done it since, since day one, since he's been here. Um, and like you said, they have consistently been in the postseason every year uh, with some great success. And so we're hoping the same same holds true for the springtime. Yeah, and that's that community feel that he talks about during the recruiting process. But next week, we'll have Coach Linda Sunday from the women's soccer program on the show, but uh, until then, we're going to take about a 168-hour break. Yeah, Coach Sumner, it, it, it'll be royalty. I mean, a member of the Geneva Hall of Fame for sure when she was a player here, so uh, but great success as a soccer player, uh, and then she's uh, she's done really well with the women's team as well, so yeah, it'll be nice to catch up with her next week. Well, thanks for watching. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Spotlighting the very best at Geneva College Golden Tornado Athletics. This is Tornado Tuesday.